Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I am talking an over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of everything, from the global industrial civilization to the rest of the planet, and it is a gorgeous Sunday. It is now a early Sunday afternoon. That would be Sunday, August 20th, 2023, which is my 40th wedding anniversary. Uh huh. So, uh, guys, <laughs> I was all set to come on here today and bring you the latest research about the overkill hypothesis is, you know, this raging debate about was it humans or was it climate change that pretty much emptied uh, what is now the great United States of, what was it, 15 genera of large mammals, uh, the great megafaunal extinction which, strangely enough, seems to follow everywhere where humans step. Humans get there, and, and then these animals that have been doing just fine for millions of years are extinct uh, soon after humans get there. And uh, so I was all set to do that, and then I opened up. Uh, medium daily digest and guys I, I I don't know if you're sick or not of hearing from this fellow named Indica I don't know how many rants I just feel like I did one uh, from this guy but, but this dude Indica uh, who I guess I need to break down an interview on Collapse Chronicles um, it, it, he has penned what might be the single greatest takedown of the bright green lies of this bullshit energy transition. Uh, and the, just the, the, the whole related subject of fighting climate change uh, of, of, of any essay uh, I, I might have ever read. And so even though I just covered the guy and it said that I'm not going to be doing as much doom scrolling through medium.com. We will have to save the overkill hypothesis for tomorrow. And one more time, we're going to hear from one of the most intelligent voices in the Doomosphere. I will uh, put the link to his latest essay from uh, <clears throat> Indica, who is a writer from Sri Lanka with a name I can't pronounce is who this guy really is. Alright, take it away Indica, and if, if there's anybody left who, un who doesn't understand what is happening w with this bullshit energy revolution let indica explain it to you since i cannot come up with such a perfect articulation of what i have been trying to say for years <clears throat> why we need to stop fighting climate change how do you fight a force of nature and should it be done and now, you know, Indica is a big uh, fan of the F word. So normally, whenever I encounter the F word in Indica's writing, I just uh, do some poetic license editing and change it from the F word to the D word, doomed. So I change f too doomed. Uh, I might let a few of his uh, F-bombs slide in, so uh, you might hear some F-bombs 
if they just work better than the D word. Take it away, Indica. <clears throat> like all fighting against nouns, drugs, terror, the fight against climate change is a category error. Climate change is a natural reaction to artificial growth. Centuries ago, colonizers incarnated human greed as corporations, and these now ruling AI have done what they're programmed to do, grow at any cost. We, assumingly meaning humans, are not even the relevant species to climate change, and now is not the time to do anything about it. As all of you should know from your own lives, sometimes it is too little, too late, and there are bigger forces going on. Climate change is one of those things, is one of those things, and this is just one of those times. Anyone who has lost love, lost loved ones, or just failed a class or missed a train should know this intimately enough. Fighting climate change is saying that actions should not have reactions and that causes should not have effects. It is fighting a causal process which is impossible, undesirable, and also completely misunderstanding the problem, which is, actually, which is actually a predicament, as the Merovingian AI said in the Matrix, quote, you see there is only one constant, one universal, it is the only real truth, causality, Action, reaction, cause, and effect. Close quote. Fighting climate change, in the common mis in the common understanding of it, is to cheat causality, to have our climate and eat it too, to switch to renewables. Switch what? The same artificial growth machine that is trashing the planet in so many ways besides CO2? The grand plan, the grand plan is to continue bulldozing the world just with an electric bulldozer now. Can you see the problem here? As Dr. Tom Murphy said in his physics textbook, if energy becomes essentially unlimited by some technology, I shudder to think what it would mean for the rest of the planet. And that is the rant that I did recently. That was the title of the rant. Um, yes. If we're going to fight something, we should consider A, what do we win, B, can we win, and C, should we win? I'm afraid the answers are no, no, no. That's why when it comes to fighting climate change, we should seriously consider losing if we're at war with the gods of climate, the best option is definitely surrender. Okay, A. What do we win? What do we win? The goal state of climate change is not clearly defined, so I'm channeling general assumptions here. <clears throat> the poor definition of winning is a problem with all fights with downs. It's like playing football without a goal. Note that I'm talking about common understanding of the fight against climate change. 
there are people proposing degrowth and people welcoming total collapse, but these are generally considered fringe beliefs right now. <clears throat> the common understanding of winning the climate fight is that we stop using fossil fuels, stop emitting and even capturing CO2, and carry on a visually indistinguishable type of civilization, broadly to change the engine, but not the type of vehicle or where it's going. The general vibe is that one type of product, fossil fuels, is bad. Fossil fuels are bad. And that we should switch to consuming other products, renewables. If you look at the marketing of climate change, the promise is that you can have the same lifestyle, even better in an electric vehicle and with a different type of milk. The promise is that the future will be even better, faster, more comfortable, and without all that pesky guilt weighing you down. As the Miller Lite slogan says, same great taste, less filling. This type of marketing is just another omission called bullshit. The myopic focus on CO2 <clears throat> coming out the back of the world destroying machine ignores what's on the front, which is a fucking bulldozer. How do you sustainably satisfy every appetite or renewably dig shit out of the ground and make disposable products out of it. How is corporations growing forever consistent with finite resources? How does exporting infinite growth to the moon Mars or virtual worlds help. These places all cost vast amounts of energy to get to or create. <clears throat> We're again solving a problem with more problems, hence the predicament we are in. All of the, quote, solutions to climate change are just marketing slogans to keep capitalist and carry on. It's like cigarettes telling you that they have less tar, okay? What about all that other shit? Infinite growth on a finite planet still gives you fucking cancer in the long run which is where we are. As you can see, our goal state of fighting climate change is precisely the problem, which is human domination of the world. It is the very idea that we should control nature that caused the problem. You cannot mitigate the effects of this hubris with more calls. What are we proposing really with all this green growth and innovation? We're proposing to bind nature in lithium chains instead of hydrocarbons. That's all. We've gotten away with it for so long that we think we can pull a fast one on nature again. Follow the science! But nature will not be fooled. This is just the same old hubris in new packaging, the attitude of fighting and winning 
over nature is precisely why we lose. Nature is a balance. One species winning is an oxymoron. Let's get to B. Can we win? Luckily, question mark, we cannot actually do it. We cannot win as much as we try. Fossil fuels were a spectacular one-time inheritance and we just blew it. There is no ready replacement, nor is it physically possible. You simply cannot get the same energy density and functionality from renewables. Long haul flights, shipping across the open ocean, sprawled out cities, disposable everything, including construction, that has all got to go. This is not the victory state anybody is marketing at all. We can certainly have different and vastly reduced civilizations, note the plural, with different energy sources, but not this one. Ours is a massively cooked up civilization and we cannot just switch to Coca-Cola and expect, I'm sorry, ours is a massively coked up civilization and we can't just switch to Coca-Cola and expect the party to go on as before. Murphy goes into the physics of human ambitions on a finite planet in his textbook, which I have gone through in blog posts covering how precisely we are doomed, <clears throat> including mathematically, economically, and financially. You can really pick any way of looking at it. We are completely fucked. Anyone saying we're not is presuming some unknown, effectively magical technology to save us, but this ain't a movie and we ain't the stars. As Murphy says, pulling a few rabbits out of a hat does not imply infinite rabbits. Sometimes the rabbit just goes in the pot and doesn't come out. <clears throat> For a less academic perspective, just go to the Maldives, or more precisely, don't go to the Maldives. The Maldives is a close neighbor to Sri Lanka, and I recently went there myself. The place is both being destroyed by flights and shipping and also cannot live without them. This is just the modern condition in microcosm. On the other edge of this civilization, in Yellowknife in Canada, people are desperately filling up on gasoline, a cause of climate change, to escape wildfires. An effect. The ironies at the edges of this industrial civilization are unavoidable, but the point will get to the core soon enough. We are all living like this, just with different levels of deniability. Our goal state of doing everything we're doing but better is not just stupid, it's physically impossible. There are necessarily going to be trade-offs 
and switching energy sources from millions of years of stored solar energy to collecting it yourself. But we're not even talking about trade-offs. People want to trade in their Toyota for an even better Tesla that goes faster and lets you play video games while mowing down homeless people. We are deeply delusional. We misunderstand both the problem and even our solution to the made-up problem doesn't work out. Which brings us to see, should we win? Now, the most important question, which scientists especially don't ask, is should we win it all? Should we pull a technological rabbit out of the hat and find some way to continue this high consumption, high growth civilization as Dr. Murphy or anyone who has seriously thought about this will say this, this is a terrible outcome. You simply cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet, whatever the energy source. If we switch this bulldozer, we can call a civilization to electric. Guess what? It's still bulldozing. We will still be devastating land, extincting relatives, producing massive amounts of waste, and consuming other resources to exhaustion. If we change the emissions coming out of the back of this, civili of this civilization, it is still spewing the massive bullshit that this type of civilization is a good idea at all. <clears throat> Remember that climate change is a natural reaction, action, reaction, causality. Our victory state is continuing the same causes without the effects. In addition to being impossible and impractical, this is just wrong. This is a novel concept for scientists motivated by pure curiosity, Ray Katz, and capitalists motivated by pure greed, but it is important. <clears throat> so, what exactly is wrong? <clears throat> and what would we actually need to do to make things right? again. Well, the first thing is that we need to give up fighting and generally give up the higher power which we are calling climate right now. If we still want to use warlike metaphors and what else do we know, the logical response would be surrendering to the climate which is a force of nature and a noun, something both so real and simultaneously abstract that it cannot be possibly defeated in open battle. We are tilting at clouds with windmills, and this does not work out. That is why we need to stop fighting climate change. What are we even fighting? The climate? The gods? We need to take an eye for once. That's what it means to live in balance. I don't know what he's saying. We need to take an L, I'm sorry, we need to take an L 
for once. That's what it means to live in balance. You win some, you lose some. Now, what exactly does losing look like? We'll get to that. <laughs> Annoying, I bet we will. Uh, I bet we will get to finding out what losing the war against climate change is going to look like. But right here in the uh, Finger Lakes of New York, here in the middle of August, it is a spec particularly gorgeous day, so I'm going to get out there and stop fighting climate change while I just can and get out there and enjoy this outrageously beautiful climate that your old climate change refugee from Texas found, what was it, four summers ago and have never looked back. Get out there and enjoy not fighting climate change. Well, you can't. Bye, guys. Okay, little dog, are you going to get out there and not fight climate change today? Man, look at this. Look at this gorgeous day. The Great Flood of 2023 has come and gone. The creek is up and roaring. The flowers are in bloom. I can see all the busy little bees. Except for the honeybees. Is that actually a honeybee? On the burdock? Hmm. Bye, guys.